Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn and the June 2016 1v1 tournament. We are currently in the bracket stage at the winners' finals, and Google Frog versus Snugglebase is the match we are watching next, which is going to be on Wanderlust for game one. Let's switch right to that, and still waiting on the players to place and to set up. I'm seeing Google Frog over to the west side, Snugglebase to the east, and on this map, hmm. -mm. We just saw that Snugglebase is very comfortable with spiders, and this map is not bad for spiders. Although this map is also really good for basically any bots. So I could see anything be played. Shield bot for Snugglebase. That is our eastern side, and Google Frog has not yet chosen. No clue what they're going to go for. I'm guessing that they're going to probably also go for shields. Shields have been super popular this tournament. Although Cloakie has seen some strong performance, which is good because Cloakie was considered underpowered for a while. And spiders! Nope, spiders for Google Frog. Spiders for Google Frog and shield bots for Snuggle Base. Snuggle Base starting out with an economic build. Both players actually starting out with a worker. No, flea. One flea for Google Frog. Not the typical five. One flea for Google Frog, then into the Weaver, while Snuggle Base going for a single convict into Bandit. So both players. Going for very early economy, both players realizing just how important that is. And, I mean, really, it is. It is super important. Zero-K, while it's not anywhere near as economically focused as other Total Annihilation-based games, it's still a real-time strategy game, and economy is still super important. There are very few RTS games where it's not important. I can't really think of any offhand. I mean, even Relics games, which are relatively small, like relatively small armies and such, even those make it important to have your economy going. So... Really, there's no RTS game I can think of where economy is not important. And it's, like I said, it's not as important as the other games in the Total Annihilation family of spiritual successors, but it is still important. The only downside, of course, is that if you're focusing too much on it, you get shot for it, and then you lose. That's... Your units get shot for it. You do not yourself get shot for it, because that would be kind of cruel to put you in a firing line just for overbuilding your economy. Especially since you're supposed to do it, it's just that, you know, overbuilding your economy is risky. But since both players went for it, it's going to be fine. Both players are, are going to end up doing the late game, or at least mid to late game. They're going to end up just having that set up. So it's not going to be too bad. Now, with Google Frog and that Venom there, that's going to be possibly an issue. Like, that Venom... Oh, no, I can't deal with Snuggle Base's Commander fast enough. Never mind, Snuggle Base's Commander's fine. It's gonna say, if it stuns out Snuggle Base's Commander, that's gonna suck. For Snuggle Base. But no, Venom Redback coming in, and Google Frog is gonna be just fighting a bunch of bandits, because right now Snuggle Base is still going for straight bandits, not going for rogues. Really surprising me. Also really surprising me that this thing is flickering. I don't know why, that's a bug. There are many bugs. We're still working out the kinks, but yeah. The bandits are... Not the only thing. We do have rogues. Good. Snuggle Base does have those. That's what you need against Spiderbot Factory. Especially against Venom Redback. And at this point, it looks like Google Frog is aware of this because they have switched over to Hermit. Either that or it's a hard read. But for whatever reason, we are seeing a switch to Hermit, which is not quite the counter to, ro to Rogue, but it's definitely better than Venom Redback. The counter to Rogue is just Mass Flea, but Hermit tanks it well enough. So that works out. But for everywhere else, Venom Redback is perfect. That's awesome. And, yeah, the, the Cloakie was considered underpowered. I mean, yes, since the Warrior buff, the Cloakie was not considered underpowered. But that was after the last tournament, I think. Or maybe right before it was. Maybe right before the last tournament. But, yeah, there was a little while where, because of the Amphib and Jump Bot matchups, the Cloakie Bot Factor was not used. Then Warrior got buffed. And Scythe became super popular. And now Cloakie Bots are used all the time. Even though Shields are also used a lot too. Not sure which I'd recommend to new players, but they're both about even for popularity, I've noticed. And they've both had strong showings at the tournament, which is pretty good to see. That's usually a good sign. Although, on the other hand, it's also a matter of map pool, of course, and that varies. But these are relatively straightforward, if smaller maps, so for the relatively straightforward and smaller maps in the game, Shield Bots and Cloakie Bots are both relatively good. And nice, there we go, Hermit's 
managing, oh, not just Hermits, I mean, that's the ambush. That's the thing that spiders do well, is get over the hill, deal some damage. Drop down from the cliff, deal some damage. It's just, that's what they do. They never, they don't work super well cut out in the open. They don't necessarily die, but they are generally disadvantaged. But in this situation where it's just crest a hill and hit, yeah, that's awesome. And Google Frog's commander with the particle beam, where Snuggle Bites is commander with the riot cannon. So at this point, Google Frog cannot easily move forward. They sort of can. The Hermits can tank. That's not the worst idea in the world, but it's a bit tricky. Whereas Snuggle Bites with the bandage trying to lock off the south side of the map. We'll probably try to build that up. And Google Frog, on the other hand, just getting the Hermits going. How many Hermits are they going to want before they actually attack the Rogues? I feel like Google Frog is trying to pull Snuggle Base into their into Google Frog's base. Trying to get Snuggle Base into a trap. That's what I feel like Google Frog's trying to do right now. Because they keep moving forward, grabbing the Snuggle Base's unit's attention, and then pulling back. And at the same time, Flea attacking a Metal Extractor at a proper range so that the Metal Extractor cannot blow up and kill them. As Metal Extractors don't want to do, because I can't actually show where it is, but... Metal Extractors tend to do that. They tend to explode and kill Fleas. That was good spacing. I like to see that. Always good to point that out because that is definitely worth pursuing in your own play. It's difference between well, between effective fleas and un ineffective fleas. And uh, speaking of effective, we have an infiltrator, which I think didn't die. Where'd the infiltrator go? There's an infiltrator just happened. Oh, there it is. Hey, it did its job at any rate. So eight seconds left, and that commander, which. Riot Cannon and Plasma Artillery, not able to do a whole lot. Not able to do a whole lot to save its comrades, and as a result, pretty much forcing Snuggle Base to fall back. And the Reckless Hermit setup is pretty strong here. Unfortunately, though, Snuggle Base is kind of staking out Google Frog's southern expansions. Google Frog has not really expanded too much. They're behind economically. So while a fair amount of damage has been dealt to Snuggle Base's commander, and getting rid of that would nullify a lot of Snuggle Base's investment, it's still not what Google Frog necessarily wants to do. Google Frog is behind economically, and we see this a lot with Google Frog's play, is that they do have a tendency to get a strong economic start and then stagnate at that economic level. But then do a lot of damage micromanagement-wise, which is why I always say if you're fighting Google Frog, go for the economic advantage right out of the gate and never lose it. Because if you lose the economic advantage, you'll probably lose the game. Admittedly, at Snuggle Base's level, it's less likely that Snuggle Base would outright lose the game if they lost the economic advantage. But still, they have an economic advantage. Why Why not keep it? There's no reason to lose it. At this point, though, Snuggle Base just reclaiming what they can. Very smart. Getting all the stuff they can off of Reclaim before they have to retreat for, for good. I mean, that's good for Snuggle Base and also denies a bit for Google Frog. I think they probably reclaimed about two or three hundred metal. Admittedly, there's still 900 left, but that's something. Didn't completely leave that for Google Frog. Maybe it's even less than that. Maybe it's only 100 or so. But yeah, Google Frog still pushing out. Now taking the southwest. That's what they need to do. And also trying to take the north, but not really managing to hold on to it. Getting some damage. Some rogues over to the north to deal with that. But at this point, Google Frog just softening up all the defenses. Getting rid of Snuggle Bases hill position right in front of the base. And that's leaving Google Frog relatively free to expand, while Snuggle Base has already expanded, getting to the south, getting to the north as well. So Snuggle Base still ahead economically, but Google Frog finally catching up. Getting rid of that contain. Not sure if they're gonna get rid of the radar though. Does Google Frog know it's there? No, Google Frog does not actually know it's there. They know the lotuses were there. They don't know the radar's there. They'll find out soon enough because they're gonna walk by it. And they'll see, oh, hey, there's a radar. We might want to kill that. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they don't. Nope. Looks like no. Looks like they do not care. Not going to worry about it. And Roach coming in as well. Got to watch that. Hopefully, I can actually show Roach on camera this tournament. Unlike my normal bad habit of missing every single Roach explosion, except for, like, one so far. And that one was a dud. Completely out of the way. Totally diffused by Google Frog. Bit contradictory there. It wasn't a dud, it was just diffused. Nice defusal. Good job, Google Frog Spider Bomb Squad. 
Because that would have been a problem. Like, if that had hit Google Frog's forces, the game would probably be over because then Snuggle Base would overwhelm and Google Frog, while they have the economic parity, don't really have a whole lot of units and their main unit right now is the Grab, which is being built up. But had they lost the rest of their army, that would have been death. Actually, Google Frog probably would have canceled the Crab and tried to rebuild the Venom Recluse army that they have right now. But that still would have been really problematic. Thankfully, it was not the case. Not to be. The Roach did not manage to get any damage dealt. Although Snuggle Bay is still getting a lot of pressure in, Google Frog, with the economic disadvantage, once the Crab gets up, which will be another few seconds, that might turn it around. We'll see. I don't know. I think the Crab is going to be helpful, but I don't think it's going to turn it around on its own. I think it's going to still come down to very clever tactics. And also making sure that there are no easy positions for Snuggle Base to attack, like they're raiding to the south right now. Like, leaving stuff like that open, which Google Frog's kind of not doing because they do have the Lotuses, but still, it's really hard to completely close that off. But still, Google Frog trying their best to make sure that it's not free. Still slowing it down. Slowing down Snuggle Base's forces, and the Crab dealing a fair amount of damage, getting rid of and heavily damaging what they don't get rid of. All these rogues. Actually, really getting rid of the rogues. So at least Snuggle Base getting pushed back a bit, the pressure being relieved slightly. But still, the economic advantage goes to Snuggle Base. The production advantage is also going to Snuggle Base. Because while Google Frog does have 30 metal per second going into their factory and another infiltrator being built up, probably to get rid of the commander, which is being a real pain. I mean, the commander is basically crab level, except for the health. Like, for the health, when you consider that that crab is armor. So really, it's like the crab except for the armor. But that crab... That pretty much saved Google Frog at that point. Got rid of the, ro the rogues, and while well, at this point we are seeing Snuggle Base is going south, trying to flank around where Google Frog is less well defended, there are also infiltrators afoot, and that commander... That commander is about to die, I think. Like the infiltrators, one of them is going for the, for the stinger. That's not a bad idea. Get that out of the way. But is the other one going to go for the commander? It looks like maybe not. Maybe the commander's just going to be forced back. Not even attempted to be killed. Just forced away by recluses. Just intimidated. And it looks like, yeah, the, the other infiltrator's just hanging around. Seeing if there's any other high value targets besides the commander. Because the commander's kind of an easy kill for the recluses. Seems to be what Google Frog is thinking. The problem, however, is the south side of the map. These bandits are coming in with impunity. If there was a Stardust here, that would help a lot. But I know Google Frog is not a huge fan of Stardusts. Like, I've talked to them about it before when I've used Stardusts in games against them. And they basically told me, you probably could have gotten away with Lotuses and Defenders. A lot of the time they said that. And that's often true. But in this case, with all the bandits coming in, Stardust is the way to go. But it's not necessarily easy to tell. That's a bit of a read. And we have Jump Bot coming in as well. I don't see any fruit of that so far. It looks like we just had the Jump Bot factory. That Snuggle Base has. No actual jump bots. But yeah, so that's the thing, is that Stardust is a bit of a read, because it does require that your opponent continues to raid with the raiders. It does protect an area, though, and really, Snuggle Base, they've taken the north and the south just with continued applied pressure. That's all they really had. Like, Google Frog right now has actually been probably a bit more clever tactically, but they haven't had the economy to make that really work out. I mean, another infiltrator attack looks like it's ideal, but not happening. Oh, there it is. It, however, it, oh no, it's been revealed. Nice crab shot there. Save the, oh, would have saved the infiltrator if the infiltrator had moved. It was so close to heroism. Almost heroic. Actually, it was heroic. It's just that it then failed because the infiltrator clearly did not value its own life and just stayed there waiting to die. At this point, Snuggle Base pretty much about to take this. Google Frog will probably throw in the towel if this attack fails. If the attack succeeds, we could see the game continue. And Google Frog still trying to push hard, trying to get rid of metal extractors where they can. But it's getting rid of the bandits that's proving problematic. I mean, one of the Venoms has them. Or a couple of Venoms have a couple of them locked down. A couple of the bandits locked down. But otherwise, there isn't really much. Like, Google Frog right now has... What do they even have working for them right now? Like they have the crab. They have, I guess, the commander, but so does Snuggle Base. 
the recluses are doing a fine job. Like, they're doing a decent job softening up forces, making sure that nothing can really get in. Oh, Firewalker Assist. That's what the jump bot's for. Firewalker Assist call, which is a common thing. Into Sumo! Okay, so that's basically just to break the line. Sumo just to walk in. I mean, the Firewalkers also to help break the line, soften up the recluses, tear them apart. I mean, at this point, Snuggle Base, they're doing some good jobs here. I think Google Frog might want to change off to, I almost want to say change off to air and just napalm all this stuff with a phoenix. Almost want to say that, but then of course the sumo is coming in and that would nullify the phoenix. Not sure what else would really do the trick though. I mean really, I don't know other than phoenix the thunderbird what would quickly deal with this entire line that's basically dealing with all of Google Frog's forces and stopping Google Frog from being able to hold the line. At this point, Snuggle Base can attack. Like, it's totally vulnerable. And there is an attack over to the south. Google Frog trying to outflank Snuggle Base. Take care of the south expansion. Possibly try to get Snuggle Base to attack the south. I don't think Snuggle Base is falling for that. I think Snuggle Base realizes, oh, Google Frog's forces are out of position. I'm going in. And they're going in. That's really what Snuggle Base should be doing. They're, that's what they're doing. Actually, no, they are going to the south. They're actually going to go to the south, and I don't know if that's the best idea. On the one hand, Snuggle Base does have a large army, so it might actually just completely crush Google Frog's army at this point. On the other hand, that does give Google Frog a bit of breathing room. They're rebuilding defenses, repairing the crab, possibly getting another setup here. If they got the infiltrator in place, they wouldn't be able to hit the commander too much, but yeah, so... No! Snuggle Base is getting even more clever. They're not attacking to the south, they're attacking through the southern flank, but not hitting the army, so just dodging Google Frog's army and getting into Google Frog's main base. That was clever. However, Google Frog's still pushing the issue, still f making Snuggle Base have to think about whether or not Snuggle Base wants to go back and attack the rear, because, I mean, the thing is, Google Frog's just going for this. Google Frog has nothing to lose. They've lost the game if they don't do this. They may have lost the game if they do do this, but they definitely lost if they don't. So, they're desperate. Like, Google Frog's Google Frog is desperate and in a corner. This attack is probably not going to stop. If Google Frog stops the attack, they lose. If they lose the attack, they obviously lose, but if they stop the attack, they also lose. And going for the flank on top of that, and the bandits are inside of, Snuggle of Google Frog's base, but not doing anything. And that's a large amount of Snuggle Base's forces right now, so Google Frog going for that flank, and that flank going for the commander too. The commander's not a bad idea, but I don't know if the commander's the best idea to attack. However, that is going to be the target very shortly. Once the once the stinger is down, the next target is going to be the commander. Like, the Venoms will likely come in and try to deal with that. A lot of problems being caused by the Firewalkers and especially the Racketeers. But still, that's a lot of damage. However, unfortunately, the Jack's coming in, getting rid of Google Frogs. Oh, no, not... No? No, they're not. Google Frog's commander is still alive. The crab's drawing the heat away from Google Frog's commander. Snuggle Base's commander, however, still around. Rex is trying to deal with them, but the Racketeer is not letting that happen. And Google Frog's commander... Aw, oh, trying to terraform away a bit of ground so the Jacks have a harder time dealing with this. Another Jack's going to die, but the last two Jacks will get rid of Google Frog's commander. And Google Frog realizes that's done. Throws in the towel. Valiant effort, but it really just came down to not having the economy. Snuggle Base had the economic advantage. Google Frog did a lot of brilliant moves going around. Although Snuggle Base's move to push the bandits up here was also pretty brilliant, just to distract Google Frog. But yeah, Google Frog's attack here, definitely at that position, they kind of had to. They were in a corner, but it really came down to not having enough metal. And it's really what it came down to. Google Frog was getting desperate, trying everything they could to essentially win through tactics what they had lost through not having enough economy. And I feel like if they had a stronger economy, Google Frog would have taken this game. If they just had... Because they had a stronger economy, had the economy equal to Snuggle Base, they would have had twice the number of units. They probably would have overwhelmed definitely the Racketeers. There wouldn't have been enough Racketeers to stun out the entire army. And then they would have been able to go either hit the Racketeers head on or go straight into Snuggle Base's main base, which Google Frog is likely not to do. But in this case, wouldn't have been a terrible idea. Like, compared to the alternatives, it would have been a bad idea, but it wouldn't have been absolutely the worst idea, since the worst idea would have been doing nothing. Not sure if I agree with, Snuggle, with Google Frog having gone to the center halfway through, but at that point, that was probably the best option that Google Frog knew they had. And it's just a really tough position. 
That was a very hard position to deal with that. So, at any rate, moving on to Google Frog's choice of map, because, I mean, Google Frog lost that, but wow, that was... That was a hell of a game. I mean, for being as behind economically as Google Frog was, they really stuck it out to the end. I'm impressed. But that's what Google Frog does. That's why, like I said, get an economic advantage against Google Frog and hold on to it. That is your only hope. If you are parity for economy with Google Frog, you'll probably be out microed and out unit countered and everything. Like, you'll just get whatever needs to be done to deal with you will be done to deal with you. It's terrifying. But if you have the economic advantage, you have a chance. Anyway, see what Google Frog goes for. I feel like Google Frog is probably going to go for... Oh! Orphelius won against Aquinum. How about that? Orphelius into the Losers' Finals. Having beaten Aquinum 2-0 in the Losers' Pre-Finals. Just waiting on this match. Whoever wins this move on to, moves on to the Grand Finals. Whoever loses this is against Orphelius to try to get back into the Grand Finals. So Orphelius might actually get to the Grand Finals. Depending on who loses this and who wins the losers finals. And it looks like Tandem Craters is the choice, apparently. Yeah, that's that's the choice. Which makes sense because Tandem Craters, like, okay, here's the thing. Google Frog They've got pretty decent economy. They have, I mean, for high level play, it's decent economy management. For in general, they have awesome economy management because they're a high level player. But they are more comfortable on macro maps, I've noticed. And they want to have the macro management map. That's what they want. So that's the thing, is that the macro management is what Google Frog is going to be relying on here. They want to get that. They want to win just by money. Now, Tandem Creators is a map I've only... I think I've only showed once. Like, I've barely done that map, so yeah... I don't really... I don't really know. <laughs> oh, wait! Tandem Craters! I remember this map. Yeah, here's the thing about Tandem Craters that's really important. It's not that much of a feast map. It's not very metal dense. It's got a fair amount of metal. But it's not very metal dense. So I think that's what Google Frog's trying to go off of is getting the territory to get the metal without actually letting their opponent have a huge amount of metal. And then trying to win off of carefully using these craters that are not bypassable, spiders only, or air, obviously. And light vehicles for Google Frog, but a strike command. No, really? No, it's a recon commander. So they're going to be trying to jump in into here. Like, jump down in there, probably, to get all that stuff. Masons won't be able to do any good. Snuggle base, not sure what they're going to go for. Probably also... Actually, are they going to the back? That might actually end up being gunships. Nope, Shieldbot Factory. Interesting. Okay. So, Shieldbot versus... The... Light Vehicles, and Goofrog... Starting out with Dart. A Dart. Single Dart. Snuggle base is starting out with the oh wow I can barely see them on the minimap. Snuggle base starting out with a single convict that's it. Getting super early expansion. Google Frog going for super early scouting. They care about expansion, that's what they do, but they want the super early scouting because I guess they want to know exactly what Snuggle base is up to. Because I think Google Frog is just gonna try to win by tactics again. But on this map, there's a lot more room to maneuver. And, like I said, it's less metal dense, so there's less places to obviously put defenses in. So then Google Frog can kind of raid around that. Though, then again, Snow so can Snuggle Base. Not sure how this is going to work out. And what is... Okay, both players went for the Recon Commander. That's exactly the right choice, because that means they can both be able to get into the craters, build those up or raid them out, either way, without having to go for air or jump bots or spiders. Now, Snuggle Base 
just setting up for defenses. Google Frog, on the other hand, clearly being more aggressive, getting a couple Scorchers out. Probably going to try to find where the forces are to deal with them as best as they can. And I don't really know how this is going to work in the long term. Short term, if Google Frog regroups these Scorchers, it'll work fine. But if they don't, then the Scorchers will die. That's actually one of the tricky things about this map. Because it's so sparse, it's hard to tell distance sometimes. Like, it's, you have to take into account the actual size of the units in order to figure out, okay, how far away are my units from each other? How long is it going to take to get around? Because it's hard to tell how far away things are. Because the metal is so far apart. That's what I find, at least. It's just, it, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, that's the thing with how humans, we actually figure out how far away things are, is usually by feature density rather than by absolute distance. Now, especially when you're considering the fact that I can zoom in and out, and so if I'm super zoomed in, the size of a scorcher is like, quarter of my, no, tenth of my screen at this point. Whereas to zoom out, where, like, half the map, or the whole map is on my screen, and then Scorcher is nothing, it's even harder to tell then, because you don't have an invariant of camera position. The camera position changes a lot. So it's even harder to tell distance, but I think that Google Frog's fine there. But yeah, that's the thing. Snuggle Base's bandits are actually fairly far apart. That's the thing to bear in mind here. They're not close together. But at the same time, Snuggle Base getting set up pretty well. At the bandits over to the north, it's pointing out, Felt House pointing out in chat. Bandits to the north, defenders to the south. There's not a whole lot that Goofrog has as far as free maneuverability. So at this point, both Google Frog and Snuggle Base are trying to go for these expansions, but it looks like Snuggle Base is trying to prevent Google Frog from going to the north expansions in the craters. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. I mean, that's what the bandits are there for. They're right in front of it. And the Scorchers should be able to get them out of the way to allow for Google Frog's commander to do what it wants, which is to jump down here and get all of these. But Snuggle Base is also going to go for that. And Snuggle Base right now is actually ahead economically. Google Frog continuing to expand, just building up, setting all their metal extractors up, getting around the map. Of course, that's what you got to do. But it's these, these are the jackpots. That's 7.5 metal per second right here in this crater. And the next crater is another three. So that's 10.5 metal per second in both craters. Super lucrative. That's what you want. You want that so much. And people are pointing out how Orph Orphilius won pretty easily against Aquanim. I mean, 2-0, that's impressive. I wouldn't say Aquanim's free, though. So I don't know if, I mean, no one's going to say that because it's more of a fighting game thing. And I don't like that word. But it's definitely... I mean, Orphelius is definitely a strong player. I think Orphelius underestimates themselves. I think Akron is also a strong player. So that was probably a really good match overall. But yeah, we saw the first match in the Swiss. Like, Akron and Orphelius are not too far off. It's just that Orphelius did kind of... Like, they pushed hard at the start. Did a lot of damage that way. And speaking of which, we see Google Frog doing pretty much the same thing. Raiding out Snuggle Base. At this point, Snuggle Base still has an economic advantage, but Google Frog managing to punch through the bandit line and raiding out everything. Stop me to think about how exactly they want to approach, but still. Getting rid of a convict, very good. Getting rid of metal extractors is one thing. Getting rid of the builder that's responsible for them is much more important. But yeah, so Orphilius apparently just didn't accidentally go away from keyboard or disconnect or something, which is apparently what they did during the Swiss match. I did not realize that. But that was the thing that apparently happened. At any rate, Google Frog is going to be able to do this fine. Orphelius should be interesting competition for whoever loses this, though. Like, really, as long as Orphelius stays connected, I guess, it'll work out fine. But we'll see that afterwards. For now, it's just a matter of whether or not Google Frog is going to immediately go to losers, or if Snuggle Base is going to have to fight once more in another map of their choosing. But at this point, Snuggle Base is falling behind economically. Google Frog has taken the North Crater and looks to be getting a proxy gunship factory, while Snuggle Base, having taken the South Crater, is not really taking advantage of it beyond the economy. And actually is moving into a really bad position. The Oh, can Google Frog see this? No, they can't. Oh my goodness, that commander is so lucky. Yeah, that commander just barely got away with his life. I'm not kidding. Had those Scorchers seen it, although I'm not sure if it's pathable. I don't think so. Barely. I think the one difference is that, yeah, Scorchers... Nope. 
still be close enough. Yeah, the Scorchers, if they had seen the Commander, the Commander had just jumped and was on jump cooldown, the Scorchers would have been able to swarm it and kill it. It's too late now, but very short window. If the Scorchers had seen it, that Commander would have died. Snuggle Base got so lucky there. Or they just realized they were behind the crest of the cliff, and that was, or crest of the hill, and that's the place they were supposed to be. Well, crest of the crater, lip of the crater. Definitely good position or good luck. I'm not entirely sure which, but either way, their commander's still alive and able to still continue to expand along here and just mess with everything. Which Google Frog, not really focusing on that, focusing on the gunship for additional aggression and taking a lot of damage as well. I mean, Google Frog's rating was quite effective, especially at getting rid of the convict over here. But now the reverse is happening as well, and it looks like how many masons died? It looks like just bandits and scorchers. I do not see any mason corpses. Which kind of makes sense because there's like one mason, two masons in the field. One of which is... South? There it is. Yeah, okay. So one mason under threat but not going to die. Scorch is able to save it. That's always the big thing. If you can kill your opponent's metal extractors, that's fine, but they'll rebuild. Kill your opponent's energy in their main base, that's better because they can't easily reclaim it. But it'll still rebuild. If you kill their workers, then they have to wait for another worker to drive or walk or fly all the way back to there in order to rebuild the expansions, it'll take a lot longer. It'll buy you at least a minute, usually, if you kill a worker. That is such a lucrative target, and fortunately for Google Frog, the workers were successfully defended. Unfortunately for Google Frog, it looks like Snuggle Base has... Well, maybe not quite gotten... No, not quite gotten wise to it. Trying to figure out what's going on, but no, not quite wise to the gunships. We'll see how long it takes before Google Frog goes for the full-on Banshee attack. I don't see any anti-air. I don't see any switch on Snuggle Base's side. Snuggle Base going for storage. I'm not sure if they're going to try to power out. Probably going to try to power out something. Maybe power out gunship factory, power out airplane factory. I'm not sure which. But clearly they're trying to power out something. Because otherwise you don't see storages. That's the only time you see storages is if players are planning to basically just push like 100 build power into something just at an instance. Like not continuously, just for a very short period of time, burst out a factory, or a strong unit, or a strider, or something, or a big defense. I don't know. It doesn't really matter what it is. The point is, they're trying to get, in one big burst, something. And now the Banshee's out. There's seven Banshees, an eighth in production, and the Banshee's attacking the front lines, not going to the main base. I don't agree with this. And Snuggle Base also going for the gunship plant. This is one of the reasons I don't agree. However, they are going actually below this, going south to deal with this expansion. So, okay, I do agree with that. Don't agree with flying over the Banshees, but clearly Google Frog was not aware of those Banshees. Sorry, the Bandits. Clearly not aware the Bandits were there, so... Not a bad save. Only lost one Banshee. Two Banshees in the process. So, overall, worked out. And able to even more so... Secure the economic advantage. Unfortunately for Google Fox, Snuggle Base now with their own and rapiers, which will deal with the bandits no problem or banshees no problem. And Google Frog having a really hard time actually finding anything. That's the thing. This map is very large, and neither player has gone heavily for radar. Snuggle Base a bit more so than Google Frog, but neither player is really invested in it, which means that there have been a lot of times where both players have done stuff that's hidden. Like Google Frog has the hidden expansion here, the hidden well, gunship plant rather. And Snuggle Base has hid their commander two or three times so far. And this, I mean, Stardust right there. So there you go. Good luck, Banshees. You're going to die horribly. Get out of there. Two of them died for free. That was bad. And that's the thing, is that it's pretty difficult to deal with. I mean, that's the whole point. Stardust are there to counter Banshees. Among other things. But they're like to counter Raiders. They work really well against Banshees. They're kind of your first line of defense. At least against a large group of Banshees. And that worked out beautifully. The only problem, of course, being that Snuggle Base has lost their metal economy that was kind of cheated out of the craters. So that's not ideal. But at the same time, Snuggle Base now forced into Rapiers, which Google Frog might go Rapier Trident or Pure Rapier? Not sure. Looks like Google Frog going Rapier Wasp. Where are they trying to get their expansion going? Are they trying to take the South themselves? That makes sense. That would be the thing to do. Where's that first wasp? Oh, it died. That's what happened. <laughs> well, I'm curious what'll happen, though, like if the wasps will end up expanding to the south. Because I think if that happens, then Google Frog has taken the game. 
I mean, really, at this point, Google Frog has already taken a huge economic lead. Well, okay, 30 to 20, but it's been consistently an economic lead for the last four minutes, I think. So for a little under half the game. But another wasp. Okay, what is this going to be used for? I want to know. I feel like it's got to be the south side. But I also feel like this attack here is Snuggle Base's last shot. That's their last draw. If this goes down, Snuggle Base will throw in the towel. Or at least, if they don't throw in the towel, they will then be hit very hard and thusly motivated to throw in the towel. Either way, this group of Rapiers and Banshees is Snuggle Base's last hope. And it's currently on the retreat path. However, Google Frog is gonna have to deal with the regroup force pretty shortly. I, I don't know. The crashes are a bit of a problem. Crying out loud, stupid! <sighs> okay, hitbox is being silly. I use Bloom, so people are asking, "Am I? Is the lighting the same or not?" I actually have blue, the Bloom effect on. I've got it configured to the defaults. So I set it to the defaults. So I figured for most maps they work okay. I do adjust the map brightness that the map is too bright. But yes, I do have Bloom on. So my lighting will look a little bit different, a little bit more bled out. Although, it's only bright stuff. I really wish there was a way to properly do it so you actually had proper HDR. Or at the very least had the tone exponential tone mapping. That's not really a thing. The shaders don't really support that super well. They've got a bunch of other stuff going on. Actually, come to think of it, they probably could support it okay. But there's a lot going on with the shaders that... It's not really feasible unless, essentially, that was the direction to be taken, art-wise. And I think if we were going to go for that, most people would just argue, well, then just go for pure HDR. And I'd say, well, yeah, probably. Except that I don't know if everyone has something that can support pure HDR, because it feels like there are so many people with super legacy computers that have a hard time with anything. But yes, I use Bloom. I can't seem to type it into Hitbox for some reason. But yeah, so anyone wonders. I use Bloom. At any rate, I think Google Frog still has the advantage. Snuggle Base finally sneaking out an economic advantage due to reclaim. But Google Frog with a territory, and then on top of that, so many Scorchers. We saw a game like the last game I saw in Tandem Creators was actually Google Frog going for loads and loads of glaives. That worked really well, like 70 glaives. It was about as effective as you'd expect, which was extremely effective. And on top of that, we have the Brawler as well to help out. Where are the tridents, anyway? I'm actually kind of surprised. There's very little dedicated anti-air. There's no vandals. There are no tridents. Just what we see right now. And Airplane Factory back in Google Frog's base, probably for a combination of Vulture and possibly Thunderbird. At this point, we've seen so far, there have been a lot of opportunities missed due to misinformation or lack of information. And I think Google Frog either realizes this or is just figuring, well, this is a large map. I should probably get information at some point and is therefore going to try to get information right now. But yeah, that's pretty much the next thing to do. Get information, get this airplane factory up. Do the thing. Also blow up Stardusts, but mostly just airplane factory. In order to get information and possibly stun out the entire army, and then be able to wa walk in and clean them up, because that's what you do. Okay, I gotta admit, the wasp model is growing on me. I still think it's a little bit... I still stand by the early statement about reminding me of Crash Bandicoot, but it's growing on me. I hadn't actually seen it before. I hadn't had a chance to. I've been super busy with so many different video things that I just haven't had a chance to actually... Ironically, I haven't had a chance to actually play the game that I do most of my videos on. In the last week. Or two. Yeah. Anyway. The... The Wasp is super recent. I think it's two days, two or three days ago that it was added. <laughs> oh, wow. Snuggle Base is accessing. Holy crap. Yeah, admittedly, they do have the workers coming in here, which will help out. Help reduce the excess. But I'm surprised that the gunship plant is not building stuff just to at least get some of that excess out of the way. And that's excess with storage. That's 1,500 metal. That's a lot of metal to excess. But yeah, at this point, I don't know if Snuggle Base is trying to 
figure out how to get something they really need right in a hurry. I mean, I guess they're getting a burst of builders. It just would have been nice to have that sooner so they could actually take advantage of all the metal they have in storage. And then get a burst of, I don't know, tridents? I guess they're getting a burst of vandals. It's not bad. I mean, at this point, they have 30 build power. Yeah, 30 build power. They have 36 metal. They really could use more build power, and it would be fine. They'd have no problems. Although, at this point, I feel like Google Frog's losing some momentum. It's not that they're losing. It's just that Google Frog isn't pushing as hard as they necessarily could for all the units they have. They're getting a little bit timid. Although, thanks to the Thunderbird. There we go. It was Thunderbird, and apparently no Vulture. Just Thunderbird. That was the exact reason for it all. Thanks to the Thunderbird, that's cracking over the south side, and that'll probably do it in. Snuggle base, we'll move on to game three. Jumping into the fray, that commander desperately wanting to die, but possibly also trying to pull back Google Frog's forces briefly before it dies. Nope, just jumped over Google Frog's forces entirely. Just forget you guys, I'm jumping over you, and nope, it's dead. But still, that was mildly amusing. It's like, just gonna dodge that force and go to the other side. It's like, if I tag your base, I win, right? 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 That's how it works? I don't know. Maybe that's not what they were thinking. But that's an amusing thing to think anyway. But yeah, so that was that. Interesting match. Kind of went back and forth. I think Google Frog really did take the advantage, though, around 10 minutes in. And Snuggle Base never really managed to get it back, because Snuggle Base had some hidden stuff there. The commander was out of the way, didn't really get hit. But at the same time, Google Frog had the hidden gunship plant. And Snuggle Base ended up accessing and not really building tridents or anything to deal with the air or building anything to deal with the ground at all. Even a few roaches, just to set it up so that all the scorches would die, and then that would give Snuggle Base an extra bit of momentum, or not momentum, but would kind of level the playing field a bit, and then Snuggle Base could kind of claw their way back with their economic advantage. Didn't happen, though. So we're moving on to game three with Snuggle Base's choice of map. How much metal did Snuggle Base access? Oh, only 493. It's actually not terrible. I mean, if you look at metal used, it really came out in the metal produced. Like, there was actually a fairly significant difference, and even then, it's a pretty minor difference. But those minor differences count. And damage dealt, yeah. The big difference, the reason why excess, does, excess plus used does not equal produced is because Snuggle Base had a lot in storage. That's 1,500 metal right there. There were two storages. Actually, that's 500 now because the storages are gone, but for the most of the game, it was 1,500, so that's where the discrepancy comes from. Anyhow, yeah, unit value-wise, Google Frog was ahead the whole time. And units built was Snuggle Base, but units, yeah. Overall, though, it was just... Snuggle Base had a bit more damage, but at that point, Google Frog was way ahead economically, so it didn't really matter. Anyway, the next map is going to be on... Wait, what? Doom Patrol? We were on Doom Patrol. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to be moving back to Doom Patrol, which is kind of weird. But okay. Oh, wait, no, no, Doom Patrol. No, right, Wanderlust. Doom Patrol was the semifinals. That's what it was. So we are seeing Doom Patrol again. And we are seeing this last map. I mean, this is Snuggle Base's choice. And also, the star boxes are completely wrong, but it looks like they're going to work anyway. So, how is this going to go? Google Frog going for Hovercraft, I assume? Yes, I am indeed correct. Snuggle Base, not sure what they're going to go for. I really have no clue. Amphib, okay. That makes sense. So, Snuggle Base and Amphib. Google Frog and Hovercraft. Probably going to see quite a few daggers. One to start out, and then another three with Snuggle Base going for ducks. Now, Amphib versus Hover is an interesting matchup because, kind of like Amphib versus Light Ve or sorry, Hover versus Light Vehicles, it's really a question of daggers outpace the raiders of the opposing side, but can't fight directly. Especially with ducks, because ducks just, I think, one shot daggers, actually. No, not quite. They two-shot daggers. So two ducks, kill a dagger. But the dagger is dead. Like, it's very dead. Whereas the duck takes four shots to be killed by a dagger. So, like, if it gets into a range of two ducks, it's dead. Because of homing. I expect Google Frog will immediately switch to scalpels. 
But it looks like, no, they are going for an infinite number of daggers. A countably infinite number for those who are pedants in the crowd. Of which I'm sure there are many. But still, it's infinite loop, and I think Google Frog is mistaken, honestly. I don't see why they're going for so many daggers. Granted, if there are enough daggers, yes. At four, that will one-shot a duck, and that will be critical mass. The problem being that a duck, two shots, a dagger. So two ducks, one shot a dagger, and there's not much the daggers can do about it. Even if the daggers kill the duck, the daggers will still die posthumously. Well, the ducks will still kill the daggers posthumously. The daggers will not die after dying. They will be killed after the duck dies. Because it's the duck's posthumous kill. I should probably clarify for all the language pedants in the crowd, of which I'm sure there are several more than there are math pedants. I don't know why, it just seems like a thing. And that... Oh, not hitting the daggers that are likely to die, but still... Oh, wow, is that Splash? Sheesh. I mean, considering the relative cost of these two unit types, that was actually value. Because, I mean, two ducks died for four daggers, and they cost the same. Like, they both cost 80. So, yeah, that was total value. The only downside being that daggers, I think... Well, daggers have to repair. The ducks... This duck needs to go into the water right now and heal up. Desperately needs to do that. Google Frog, however, is... Well, they're still doing okay. I mean, with these ducks fighting despite being injured, it's kind of hard. At any rate, Dagger's going around the side. Snuggle Base will be able to deal with these. Their commander will be able to deal with them, no problem. Still some damage dealt, which is annoying. Not terrible, though. Google Frog hasn't really done anything that Snuggle Base can't recover from. While Snuggle Base... If they get rid of that quill, as I keep saying, you want to get rid of workers, but it looks like Snuggle Way is just satisfied with the metal extractor, not going to bother with the quill. A bit too worried about the Lotus killing them, which kind of makes sense, and also, there are still daggers around. That's the one thing daggers do well, I've noticed, is that they really put pressure on your opponent. They really force your opponent to think hard about what they're going to do. Like, that's the thing, is that it's... It's not easy to go around and let your forces take damage to deal damage, because if you do, the daggers will rush in and punish you. But the problem, of course, is that if you have forces, the daggers can't do much. Like, they're very all or nothing that way. And right now, we're seeing even more forces, more ducks coming in from Snuggle Base, but Snuggle Base clearly not that focused on them. I mean, they only have about seven or so. Actually, it's losing. So they had nine and lost a couple. They've lost quite a few, whereas Google Frog... Okay, switching over to halberds, I was about to say, they've been continuously building daggers, but no, they are getting a few halberds now, which makes a lot more sense. Against ducks, that makes all the sense, because halberds, even without armor, take about six shots to kill. Roughly. Six full vault, like six twin bare pairs of missiles. So, assuming both missiles hit, yeah, it's six shots. Assuming they both hit. If they don't both hit, then it's more than that. Still, Snuggle Base, the slight economic advantage, really the problem that Snuggle Base has is more that they just can't harass as much as they'd like, because if they do, the daggers will punish them. That's the problem. More than anything. And also, it means that Snuggle Base has to be a bit more careful about how they expand, too. Like, Google Frog's basically forcing Snuggle Base to not be as aggressive and as expansionistic as Snuggle Base would like, without actually having to kill a lot of things. It's just that the threat of the daggers is that big. At any rate, with the halberds out, I think Google Frog is going to have this tip in their favor. Actually going to be able to take some territory rather than simply intimidating Snuggle Base into giving it to them. And the halberds over to the side. Looks like trying to figure out if Snuggle Base went to the northeast. Not sure. They didn't, but it's good to check. And then from here, it'll just be a matter of going down to the southeast and, or center east, should, rather. Take that out. What did that say? You see your ducks dying. Switch. No, actually, I agree with the ducks. The ducks are still stop. I mean, if there are enough ducks, harassment can actually happen again. Snuggle base can actually go around the side and harass. And also, and now that the halberds are revealed, yeah, the ducks are less useful. But 
before the halberds got revealed just now, the ducks were actually doing fine against the daggers. I mean, the daggers, it takes a lot of daggers. It takes four daggers to one-shot a duck. It takes two ducks to one-shot a dagger. And they cost the same. And the ducks have homing. <clears throat> so, like I said, four daggers against two ducks. One dagger and one duck will die. In the worst-case scenario for both sides. But that's still half the cost of ducks. Just to get that situation. It was four and four of his equal cost. Two daggers and one duck die. So ducks are really valuable for their cost compared to daggers. The problem, of course, is halberds and scalpels. And Snuggleways going instead for the grizzly, because that's a lot of players do that, is... And Snuggleways in particular, I think, specifically said to me at one point, you go duck to grizzly. And that's exactly what Snugglebase is doing. I kind of disagree. I think that boys have a place. I think that the scallop can have a place sometimes. But Snugglebase is definitely sticking to what I believe they've told me, if I recall correctly. They just go duck. Just too, de too grizzly, and that's how it goes. But yeah, the southwest taken out pretty thoroughly. Snugglebase's commander also going down to the halberds, able to take out one. Unupgraded commander, so at least not a whole lot was lost, but the thing that was lost was presence. Uh, that commander can't is no longer here. There's nothing that can build up here without requiring additional defenses. And there are, like, what, two conches? Three conches. Two of which in the main base, and the only other one is over to the western side of the map. So one of them could move north. There are enough caretakers. It's not going to be a big deal. Snuggle base won't excess as they've been prone to. Although Google Frog, I think, is accessing this game. But otherwise, no. It's basically coming down to... I mean, whoever takes this first... If Knuckle Base takes this, they'll be able to get their economy back on track. They send a conch up here. One conch is all it takes. Just to reclaim all this stuff. Because that'll get their economy to parity. And then from there, it's just a matter of switching over to deal with the scalpels, which is a bit of a problem. Snuggle Base right now apparently confused. They have the Grizzly out, but they don't have... Anything else? Another Grizzly coming up. Against Scalpels, I don't know. It's really hard to say. It comes down to attrition, and Scalpels are a lot cheaper. Like, this is a thousand metal worth of Scalpels. This is two thousand metal worth of Grizzly. And those Scalpels, how much damage do they deal each? 644 each. And this deals, what, 1500? Yeah, so this can one shot multi kill, but these together are dealing about. 3,000 damage a shot, so it's three shots to kill. And that's half the cost. Like, in this situation, I don't know what I'd do with Amphib. I'd almost switch off to a different factory, just because Amphib, I don't feel like, is really great at dealing with scalpels. I can't think of any options they have. I mean, the Archer might work. The Archer might be able to survive. It would survive the one shot, but is it fast enough? I mean... 75 elements per second compared to 62. It's pretty close. But Ducks, 84 is a bit faster. Boys would survive, but I don't know if they get close enough. Once again, though, 42. Yeah, way too slow. It's not going to work at all. They slow down the scalpels, which helps. But how would they get into range in the first place? So, I don't know. That's tricky. Scalpels are always tricky to deal with. I think that... It almost would just be a matter of rush them with three times as many ducks. Like, their cost in ducks. And then you'd crush them, but lose a lot of ducks. I could sort of see archers working, but it's one-to-one -one for archers. And archers are generally not considered that useful. They are probably underrated slightly, but they're not considered that useful. I think a lot of it is the fact that they're an impulse weapon, and impulse the behavior of impulse changes from engine version to engine version. So it's really hard to know exactly how that's going to work. And, of course, we have the terraform wall that Google Frog's got going on. And I think this is going to turn it around. I mean, like I said, once the Halberds came in, that was going to turn it around. And it did. And Google Frog got the economic advantage. And now a Scalpels. And there isn't really a whole lot that Snugglebase has to deal with the Scalpels. I mean, they have the pair of Grizzlies, which are dealing with the Halberds, no problem. But, like I said, that many Scalpels, all firing a volley, that's 3,000 damage. That grizzly's about to die. There it goes. One down. The other one's going to go down soon. And Snuggle Waste with the economic disadvantage. Really needing something. I mean, they got the reclaim that helped out. But they still have more things they can reclaim. This whole area here, 
That's still a thousand metal. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of metal. Well, 850 metal, but still. A lot of metal. 15 metal per second? That's... Well, okay, for 800 metal, that would be about 50 seconds or so of 40 metal per second, which is still good. It's still worth having, especially when you're building grizzly after grizzly after grizzly, and they cost 2,000 metal each. Having more metal is always good. At least Nuggle Base is rebuilding. That is important, but the problem is they're not raiding anymore. They're focused entirely on the grizzly, and that means that Google Fog can just attack the grizzly. That's all they have to worry about. If they kill the grizzly, there's no other problems. There's no ducks, there's no archers, there's no factory switch into something completely different. It's just done. Oh, I'm sorry. This is... Ah, I keep forgetting the green bar sometimes. It is, in fact, game three, and is on Dune Patrol. I'm sorry. At least I got remembered, realized in time. Or was told in time. I usually do it before the game starts, but oh well. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. At any rate, Snugglebase with a bit of rating. Never mind. They do have some ducks now, but Google Frog coming in for the last attack. This is going to be it. I don't see Snugglebase defending this. If Snugglebase does defend this, the game can continue, but if they don't, this is game. And Snugglebase not going for a counterattack. This is kind of a turnaround from last... I mean, the first game on Wanderlust, Google Frog was trying to do this sort of thing in order to essentially force Snugglebase's hand. And Snuggle Base is almost trying to do the same, but not really as strongly. I mean, to some extent, I suppose the Grizzlies are trying to force the hand, but Google Frog's got enough money. Like I said before, economic advantage, and Google Frog wins. And now the Grizzlies are just, they're stuck. Just slowly building a Stardust. Slowly building the weapon to their execution. Like machine gun firing line. I think Snugglebase is not even going to let those die. I think Snugglebase is going to throw in the towel before that happens. Main base is completely overrun. Yeah, that's that's the towel. Stardust is not even done. Or is it going to get done? No! Just finishes! Snugglebase just cheats Google Frog away from Stardusting those Grizzlies to death. But still, Google Frog wins the game, moves on to Grand Finals. Snugglebase is going to be up against Orphelius in the Losers Finals, which is going to... Probably... What map is it on? I don't know what map is it on. I really don't. It's probably either Tandem Craters or Tandem Craters. So I'm guessing it's going to be Tandem Craters. Because those are the two maps I see on the list that are next. Although it might also be Tartarus or Tartarus. Possibly it could be Fairyland or Fairyland. Those are our choices. It depends on the stage. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I think Losers Finals counts as Stage 5. But it might count as stage four. It's just it's listed by stage, not listed by the. It doesn't matter. Talking shop here. The point is, it's probably Tartarus or Fairyland next. Not sure which. But it is going to be one of the two. And that was a bit of a reversal. Google Frog definitely started out a bit weaker, but really pulled back in and just get that economic advantage, and Google Frog wins. If you don't get the economic advantage, well, yeah, that's what gives it to Google Frog. If you do get the economic advantage, then keep it. Hold on to it to your life. And I think that's going to be a small break, so stay tuned. I will be back with the Losers Finals in just a moment. So stay tuned.